This is the Pablo Acuna story is played on FM 2024 and I'm your host Jack City on the Jack City Gaming Channel. So let's uh, let's go in here. As you can see, we're part of a new uh, on a new team, as you saw through that uh, that little montage that we threw in there. So, uh, yeah, honestly, one of the big things is that we got a huge pay cut. You can probably see here is we're earning 18 and a quarter per year. Last uh, last job was we were earning hundred and three thousand dollars. So, you know, it's uh, significant how much of a pay cut we're taking. But uh, our attributes are looking pretty pretty decent now, even though we're uh, we failed in our previous job, one year in charge. But you know that is uh, that is what you know that's what we take. So I can't really I can't really say much honestly. But um, okay, let's let's just go into the the you know the Uruguayan second division from the last season. So the regular season here, as you can see, we uh, when I was at Albion, I finished eleventh place, thirty six points overall. The board deemed it not good enough, and uh, they just did not believe that they, they didn't have confidence in me in the way that I finished off the season. Uh, I, but I can't blame them honestly because they wanted me to be promoted essentially or in and around promotion and we were never really there we we're 10 points off from the last spot which was to call rumbo who actually did get promoted and um yeah so that's what that was rompla juniors uh got the championship a with a game in hand they got a draw on the second second to last game of the season it was uh i think it was the 2-2 against bella vista and then Juventus de los Piedras got a 1-0 loss, I think, to Sudamerica right there. I think that's that one. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, the last game for them didn't really matter. But, um, yeah, so congratulations to Robla Juniors for getting that. Juventus de los Piedras, uh, who is it? It's Martin Garcia. He's the uh, the man who won the title. Juventus de los Piedras promoted by Diego Forlan. Uh, I know in real life he's actually playing tennis now, but, yeah, he's in this game Getting teams promoted. The third team, uh, Luis Gonzalez, uh, was able to get Tuqua Rambo promoted, and they're one of the smaller teams in the division. Uh, this actually, Tuqua Rambo is actually a small town. If you remember back in the original map, uh, they're like in the north of the country. 
So congratulations to them. They're, they're definitely one of the smaller teams that are that's up there as well. So now, but we're taking on Miramar Misiones, who was one of the worst teams. Um, and uh, there's really, there were actually only two two available jobs. And if you remember the, the from the previous rules, I can only take a job if one, if I'm offered, if I'm employed, if I'm offered to interview, then I can. Or two, um, if I'm unemployed, I can just go apply around. And there are only two jobs that are open. One was Nacional, which is, I think, the largest team in uh, Uruguay. Definitely, uh, it, I think, uh, three Copa Libertadores, 49 uh, Uruguayan first divisions. Um, yeah, they're, they're an absolute beast. Peñarol. Five Copa Libertadores and fifty one. So maybe they're like these guys are a little larger, but uh, I think just by reputation as well as by like the amount of revenue that's generated, Nacional is larger. But um, nonetheless, that job was open, and the other one was Miramar Misiones. Uh, they fired their coach at the end of the year, so that's all I could do. Um, and that was uh, that's that's all that was available. So that is. Uh, so we took it. We took it. We were about unemployed for probably about a month, maybe a month and a half. And uh, then we interviewed and they liked what we had to say. So that was, uh, that was it. The promises I had to, I had to take, give a couple promises here. Uh, as you can see, a bunch of them actually. Javier Barrios, uh, which is the general manager here. He says that I can't apply for club applications, which is fine. Um, so that's one of them. So you can see the other ones like develop youth players, you the left left back. Uh, and then also they want me to have a better locker room atmosphere because they said that it was a problem in the last job I had. So they're like, you have to make sure that the locker room atmosphere is good. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's that, that is that. So, um, let's, let me take you through the other two major comp competitions in uh, Uruguay. One is the Uruguay Cup. Liverpool FC won the cup last year, going to the stages of last year. Fourth round. Let's go to the tree. So Liverpool beat Nacional in the cup 3-2. Um, and uh, they beat Racing uh, Club de Montevideo, La Luz, as well as Wanderers on their route to the final. Nacional had a much easier route, just at least in these last four games here. They beat two teams that are non-league in Rocha and Salus. Then they beat Boston River 8-4, to four, which is a crazy scoreline. And then, um, yeah, then they won or they lost uh, 3-2 to Liverpool. So Liverpool did, they, they lifted a trophy here and in their, this is their first ever Uruguayan Cup. So that's uh, pretty significant. And honestly, because they don't have any league title. So this is like their first real like major trophy beyond the, uh, the second division wins that they have. So congratulations to them. Uh, their coach, Emiliano Alfaro. Uh, he's now a legend. Um, he's also a Oh, he was a legend as a player. I see. I see. I see. I see. He had a couple different little stints here. 2004 to 2012. Yeah. He's been around Liverpool for a while. So, okay. Interesting. So, um, oh, Rompla Juniors when they won. Hold on here. Oh, you know what? I need to go back. Rompla picked up their fifth second division title. Um, they, they do have one, oh, 1927. Okay. Yeah. Their fifth second division title with that win as well. So that's uh, pretty exciting for them, honestly. And, uh, in the first division. So let me just, if you're not familiar, I had to do a little bit dig digging, and go down a Reddit forum to go just understand this a little bit. So let me uh, give you a little, little taste of this. So for the first division, I, this is, um, if you're familiar with like Latin America, like if you're like Liga MX, um, it's very, it's kind of similar, but a, like a little bit of a variation here. So you have the opening stage or like Apertura, right? Whoever went like, then you have like the winner of like the, the opening phase of the league, right? Then you have the closing stage of the league, right? So this is the Clausura or closing stage, right? So you have like two winners from the opening and the closing. The Intermedio doesn't have any like it doesn't have like a cup that you win like there's no significance of winning it the seven games that you you play during the group stage do count towards the overall table right and the games that you play in the opening stage and the closing stage add to that as well to give, give you a total 
of 37. So the opening stage is 15, closing stage is 15, and then uh, the intermedio is another seven. So, excuse me. So that being said, you have like the winner of the opening and the winner of the closing, right? You would go into here and then they would play in the playoff, right? This is functionally like a semifinal for the, the champions, like for the championship of the Uruguayan first division. So the Wanderers won the closing stage and Liverpool won the opening stage. So Liverpool won the playoff. So they're going to go to the actual like championship game, right? Which is played over two legs. Then they're going to play Wanderers again. And the, um, and the reason why is because Wanderers, like if you're in the, cha you're, if you won the overall table, like if you're the highest rated team in the overall table, then you are automatically put into the final. But whoever wins the opening closing stage gets put into the, like the semifinal. So in this circumstance, if we had like a, like let's say we have a different outcome, if Wanderers won the semifinal, then they would have won like the championship. There was no reason to play the champions, uh, the championship playoff because they already beat the other team. But you know, if another team wins the Apertura and Clausura, like obviously that would it doesn't guarantee because obviously the Intermedio has you know um, seven games in there. But if you win the opening and the closing, then you are. Um, like your champion, it's over. Like there's no reason to play playoffs. Like you, you won the whole thing. So Wanderers uh, won in the champions playoffs. So Wanderers have picked up a title here, which is a huge upset in the, in like in this, this country. And uh, they picked up their first title in nine, over 90 years. So Wanderers have beat out the big, big giants of Nacional and Peñarol, which is like really, really impressive. Uh, you know, Peñarol have got like 51 titles and in, in, uh, Nacional got 49. So uh, they basically hog it, but Wanderers have were able to, to pluck one out. So um, last year as well, there was literally no, like no teams went deep in the Sudamericana or the Libertadores. They all got knocked out in the, uh, the group stage. So nothing really going on there. Uh, let me show you who did win these from last year. Past winners, uh, Atletico Paranaense and Minero were in the final. And then the Sudamericana, Newell's Old Boys beat Junior from uh, Colombia. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, Junior, they're, they're uh, Carlos Baca. If you remember him from AC Milan and Villarreal, uh, yeah, he's playing in Colombia for Junior, so... Yeah, but that's uh, that was basically what happened. So let me just take you over to uh, this this save file that I have that's just tracking all of the data for coaches and teams. All right, and then, oh, and then and then we're gonna go. Uh, I'll plug you right back into like just the team of Miramar Misiones. Okay, so this is the uh, the file here that I've been kind of holding on. So here are all the teams. This is like just going to be tracking the uh, club honors as we go through the seasons. So as you can see, uh, nobody won anything for like continentally. And the first division is going to Wanderers, Uruguayan Cup for L Liverpool. And then Nacional won the Super Cup last year. And now Wanderers won it this year. Rompla Juniors got their second division title, and then you can have the trophy count, and this will sum anything that's won from, you know, column B to column H. The promotions uh, are going to be the three teams that we noted earlier. Juventus getting second, Rompla getting first, and then Tukua Rambo winning the playoffs. So that is uh, their promotions. The the t the two teams that got are promoted from the third tier, which is not a loaded league, it's not even available unless you get, you know, the added... Um, databases for Uruguay. So the, the two teams that get promoted from like the first division amateur, which is like the third tier to the second tier, it's not going to be counting as a promotion. Uh, and that is going to be Colón de Montevideo as well as uh, Central Espanol. So they're they not going to get promotions for that. However, the relegations from the second tier are legitimate. They are going to be counted. So the two teams that got relegated, Bella Vista as well as... Um, Oriental de la Paz, and the three teams that got relegated from the first tier to the second, Deportivo Maldonado, uh, La Luz, and Racing CM, or Club de Montevideo.
Now, uh, here are the t like the the honors for uh, uh, the teams. You know, first division player of the year. It's uh, Peñarol, uh, and then top goal scorer Cerro, and then uh, young player of the year Peñarol, and then first division rookie was for Cerro. Um, team of the year. Uh, you got one for Cerro, two for Defensor Sporting, three for Liverpool, one for Nacional, and then four for Wanderers. Um, and then the overall best 11 will happen at the end of the second season. Now, funny thing, like re like genuinely just like breaks my brain. It's so hilarious. Is that the team of the year, um, I can show you who like the, the positions, right? The two strikers are from Liverpool. It's from Liverpool and Nacional. Right, so this is the the team of the year. For, so Liverpool Nacional. So you can see Seto has a right center back here. Right, that's the only that's who won the the team of the year. The person who won the first division player of the year came in second for the Golden Boot race. Okay, and they are a striker. They did not make the team of the year. The person of whom won the top goal scorer is also a striker, who did not win player of the year. You would assume so because they. Um, one top goal scorer as a striker and the person who won the player of the year was a striker who came in second. Now they have, you're like, oh, maybe it's the assists. Tied on assists. So it has like, the team rating is 0.01 more. So that's why the reason why they won. But it like makes no sense. And then on top of that, both of those players, the, the highest goal scoring striker and player of the year did not make the team of the year, which is hilarious. So what, I, you know, the computer could do weird things, but whatever. Um, uh, so anyways, uh, years in the first division, uh, I'll be counting those. Uh, these are also points earned in the first division. And we'll be doing the same thing for the second division here, you know, for points earned explicitly in the second division as well as how many years are in that and then you get a second division player of the year that was a team guy on Sudamerica the top goal scorer Juventu de las Piedras and then the young player of the year was went to a guy at Progreso and then here are your place points this is basically going to show like historical uh performance like per your place so as you can see Wanderers won the title last year so based on the overall tables right of everything they're going to get 30 points because if you go over here to the team details um see there are 30 places so those like 1 through 16 and then 1 through 14 right so this is like you know you get 30 points 29 28 27 and so on and this will get you one point for being last in the second division so um this will kind of track historical performance so that's place points if you will um, I'm also tracking here uh, in this, like just like most points uh, over the course. This is 30 seasons over here, but I doubt we'll get that far. But this will be showing you like how, like who has like the best uh, performances over the years because it'll be based on like like the highest points amount uh, based on the global table. So also possibly worst worst place points like i mean bella vista got 12 points last year so it's possible they could just be the worst like from the first season as well now going on to the second uh the the second table it's head coaches uh we've had 36 coaches so far obviously there's been um there were 30 coaches last year and there were uh like a handful of uh firings as well so there's like new head coaches that come in right None of these, as you can see, like the coaches who won uh, last year, you know, Rompla Juniors, you know, this guy's for Wanderers, you know, so on and so forth. The promotions from the, the second tier to the first tier. Here are your relegations, the five teams, right? Number of years in the first and second division. And then uh, head coach of the year was Alejandro Capucho, which makes sense. He was the head coach of Wanderers and won the title. And then uh, Diego Forlan won second division head coach of the year after getting a second place finish with Juventus de las Piedras. Uh, and then of course there were six firings and our avatar Pablo Cunha was amongst one of the firings. I'm also tracking their uh, nationality in case, and, uh, they're all Uruguayan so far. So that is, uh, that is what it is. So, um, yeah, just thought I'd show you guys that it just, you know, as, as things go through, um, but yeah, this is uh, the 
like the level of detail. I just want to make sure that we we're tracking things as they go. But let's with you know let's pop over to Miramar Misiones and then I'll introduce you to the team as well as some of the expectations that are going to be set uh, for by the board for this season. Okay, so let's uh, let's start off with these promises here. So. Um, first things first is Maximiliano Lombardi, who is a player, says he will accept a capstone change, uh, which was nice. He is uh, quite old, so he's not going to be like a... He's going to be a leader, but he's not going to be like the the vice captain, let's say. But uh, he did a little bit through. He said that we basically don't have any depth in the left wing back position. So um, I told him that we're going to have to develop youth players in that position to compensate because we just uh, we don't really have the finances as seen here and uh, the payroll were overspending and that's because well i'll run into that later so the squad um again you know i have the real life like the real world like transfers that happen so a lot of these guys came in and i had no, there was no say it's just like these guys are coming in and leaving and that is what it is so that's predominantly the reason why we are overspending at the moment so uh couldn't really do much of that as well as the youth intake already happened by the time that i joined so there's a lot there's a couple guys that probably shouldn't be in the youth academy at the moment because you know we gotta save on cost so let's start off so our starting uh goalkeeper is nicolas guirin um he's halfway decent uh if i'm honest he is listed as a star player you're gonna see that this is gonna be a problem because the other star player goalkeeper is lucero alvarez 39 years old uh goalkeeper yeah uh He's a, he's a new signing as well. So, And then Lucas Gonzalez, who was at Albion with us last time, as you can see, he did not perform that great, and I constantly complained about him. So he's also at the team that I just joined, and he's supposed to be a first-choice goalkeeper. So uh, the promise that they asked me earlier about uh, acceptable locker room at atmosphere, well, let's just say that the director of football or the GM or like these real world trades are not doing me favors. Having three starting goalkeepers, just not great. Anyways, um, the next uh, big, big guys here uh, we got for like the back line is Tiago Chivuli, who is on loan from Defensa y Justicia in Argentina and uh, he's pretty decent honestly uh, like he's gonna be uh, I think he's gonna be really really crucial for us uh, I'm very much looking forward to using him I'm gonna use him as like an attacking uh, center back or attacking uh, like wing back uh, possibly even getting into that defensive midfielder role Federico Alonso 32 year old center back great mentals like physical or technicals physicals is where you need them so that works Nicolas Ayala a 28 year old Uruguayan also Really good player, uh, star player, no problem. Uh, definitely enjoy his uh, his ability there. Matias Aguirre-Garay, uh, yeah, it, 34 years old. He's like definitely solid. Unfortunately, he is uh, trending downwards, so I'm a little bit worried about how he's going to be at the end of the year. But uh, we got plenty of coverage on the right wing here, so I am not super like upset about it. I am training him to be in the middle here for the defensive uh, or like the center back jeez um so just to, to get more coverage because i need a little bit more coverage in that that center uh the the center back center back role because the only other guy is steve makuka uh yeah he's just like i i'm like kind of underwhelmed by him so it is what it is also i hate the the agreed playing time like it's really terrible like look at a star player like get out of here um okay so joaquin trasante um yeah, I mean, he's just where you need him to be good, he's good. So, yeah, that works. Uh, Diego Nunez, uh, not related to Darwin. And, uh, yeah, I mean, decent player for sure. Um, yeah, I wish he would be related to Darwin. Um, but, yeah, that's it. Matias Pintos, he's going to be our starting left wing back. Um, average player at best honestly and that's basically it for the left backs like the only other guy i got is ayrton castro who's going to be our young player that we're going to be bleeding in this is the best we got for our like backup left back so pintos please do not get injured we are definitely liable in that position now uh maximiliano lombardi um like 
uh, he's decent. Like his physicals have already eroded, but like his, his mentals and technicals are still like pretty decent. So yeah, he might be able to do a job. He might not be able to hold his place forever, but that is what it is. Me, uh, Michael, uh, Cabrera, he's going to be our star striker for sure. This is the guy even preseason. He was absolutely lighting it up. And then next to that is, uh, Douglas Jardel. Uh, I believe if I'm remembering this correctly, he won. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. He won top goal scorer last year. No. Came in third place. Okay. You got 21 goals last year. Came in third place. So, um, yeah. So, like, Douglas Jardel, he's going to be here. So, we got two, like, really good strikers. So, I am excited about that. We got two, like, bona fide strikers. So, uh, on the bench, we got Maurizio Gomez. Um, he's the other guy that, like, it's going to be between Gomez and Aguirre Garay. Uh, who in terms of like the right wing back, really, really good. Good at free kick taking as well. Like Gomez is going to be, he's going to be up there. Um, Luciano Fernandez is the third choice. Honestly, like he's not great, but he's not bad. Um, so yeah, anyways, but that's it. Juventus want to pick him up, take him. I don't care. Um, going further, Oscar Diaz. He is a guy that I just put him up from the, uh, the reserves. He's not good. Uh, uh, he'll barely get any playing time. I just need bodies, honestly. Um, this guy, uh, Jordi Lopez, uh, we just picked on for on loan from Liverpool. Uh, this is someone that the, uh, the general manager actually loaned in. It's not a real world transfer. So, uh, yeah, just a little bit more cover, like in the actual, uh, the defensive midfielder position. And we did need that. So that's nice. Matias Ferreira, uh, Decent player, honestly, like, you know, where you need him to be. Uh, he did decently in the preseason, so uh, looking forward to that. Uh, Ignacio Yepes, he's legit. I am very, very excited. We, uh, you know, we're going to start our first game as a 5-2-1-2, uh, but once we, if we're going to make that change to, like, where where you saw before, the, uh, was it like the 5-2-3? Um Ignacio Yepes is going to be part of that every single time for sure. He's, he's very, very good. Uh, Dennis Oliveira came in with a crucial ligament uh, injury. He looks good. I've just never been able to use him so far. He's just coming back now. Facundo Silvera in preseason, this guy could not stop scoring. So I'm very hopeful that he'll be able to come back in and then we're going to be able to use that, uh, that, that five, two, three, uh, to effect. Uh, and then lastly, Pablo Lopez, uh, another, like, I, I think he might be a staple, honestly, in, in the back line there. So, um, yeah, he, well, he definitely has the, the ability to be a staple in the back line. Um, because I think, like, optimally, Lopez goes back to uh, here, like, right in the, the this position. And then Ayala moves up to where Nunez is. And then Nunez rides the bench. So, that would be, like, the optimal. But, yeah. So, as you can see, uh, I am a little bit worried because of all the agreed playing time that the, uh, everybody was given uh, based on the, either the transfer or how the general manager brought people in. It's going to, it's probably going to run into a problem. Uh, transfer history here. Do, 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 do. Um, Jordi Lopez is the only guy that the general manager actually brought in on loan. Uh, everybody else was like, like an automatic transfer that was already uh, agreed upon per the real world transfers. The only people that were like left, um, actually, you know what? Juventus picked off three guys of ours, which was crazy. Uh, and we did make some good sales. Uh, Federico Amistoy, 25 and a half thousand. He's just a young player. He was never really going to make it for us anyway. So sure. You could take him. Uh, and then Emiliano Alvarez, uh, he's actually like, he was a decent center back for us. Uh, and he got picked up by Palestino in, um, Chile. So, um, yeah, I mean, we need the cash, so that's totally fine. Now the club vision for this year, work within the payroll budget. Obviously that like that was never, it's not realistic. So I, I hate the idea that I'm, there's a required importance on this and they, 
it, like it's it's like structurally against me because uh even though oh my god like before the closest we got to was like 475 so we're still like seventy five thousand dollars more than like in the payroll and then we added a few more and it was like oh my god this is like we got to like the lowest we could and it's like we we would have to be working with like just academy players like build like starting academy players it's just like there's too much too many cuts you know you would never be able to do it so um that's that also the scouting budget is basically zero which also is a problem so um yeah, so that's th we're probably gonna fail this one. That's just how it is. Uh, that being said, they want to grow the Red Club's reputation. They're only favored. Um, they do want me to get a top half finish uh, for this year. They don't the top three places for the uh, competencia, and then uh, just be pe competitive in the Uruguayan Cup. I actually cut the bonuses for the Uruguayan Cup, and uh, I think one of the players, Jardel, was not exactly pumped about it. Um, but everybody else didn't really care. The WTG, the waiting on promise is, uh, it's all on like bleeding in left wing backs, uh, into the first team. Um, please. Okay. Yeah. 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 Anyways, it's basically this promise. The one that, uh, I made for Lombardi develop youth players for the wing back. So, um, yeah, but that is, that is it. That's the, uh, the big, the big pieces here um, for the first game that you guys are going to see in the next episode. It's going to be the, the team that you just saw in the highlight reel coming into this episode. It's going to be a tennis. They send Carlos away. Uh, and, and you know, it's, it's poetic in the sense where I have to play them away from home in the first game. And then I got to play Albion, my former team at home in the second game. So can't write the script you know the game writes itself so that is what it is but uh please like subscribe you know comment let me know uh how what you're thinking about this and if you enjoyed you know the montage i like putting it together it's just a little bit different but um you know I, again i'm jack city this is the jack city gaming channel and then you are watching the pablo cunha story on fm 2024 thank you and have a good one